And so our next speaker, uh, Sean Gullickson from University of Kansas is going to talk to us about Proprias Palabras, an OER for cultural surveys of the Spanish speaking world. So Sean, I'll pass things over to you. Excellent, thank you very much. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. You may notice I'm outside. Um, it's not just because the weather is nice, it's also because currently in my home is a one and a half year old desperately fighting nap time. So I figured bird song and traffic sounds were probably less intrusive than the wails of my beloved son. So, but if, if you can't hear me at any point, just uh, you know, flag me down. So Propias Palabras is a long, it's been a long time coming. I just started publishing our content on Pressbooks uh, about a month ago. So I'm very excited to be able to start sharing it so soon with people outside of KU for the first time. Um, so it's a, as Carl said, it's a focused on cultural surveys of the Spanish speaking world. We have a class at KU, Spanish 346, that's transatlantic Hispanic studies. So it covers both Spain and Latin America. And we're hoping that our project can also be a bit more global and include the eventually include the Spanish Philippines, Equatorial Guinea, um, some places we don't normally hear from. Um, and it was really born after the first time I taught that class, I noticed that students were not very engaged with the textbook that we were using, which I'm not sure if anyone on here has used uh, Carlos Fuentes, El Espejo Enterrado, which is a phenomenal text in a lot of ways, but it was really hard for this level of students and it was really difficult to, to do what we wanted to do with the material. And so one thing I noticed in that first semester teaching the class was that students were really, really engaged when we did primary sources, when we worked with authentic documents, primary source texts. Um, so this idea was born that we could create a set of modules built around primary texts with proper context, with activities that, uh, that could really engage students better than our current materials were. And with the help of a grant from the libraries, I was able to get it started. Um, and along with the goal of creating these modules was the goal of supporting graduate students, which I think we can all agree, especially these days, is a very important goal and a, often a difficult one to achieve. Um, so every single cent of grant money went to graduate writers, and we were also able to use course releases sometimes to get graduates to, to participate in this project, which was really nice. Um, so the link, thank you for posting that in the chat, Sarah. Um, feel free to click around there. I'll share my screen too, to show a few examples here in a minute. Overall, I've posted them in sort of chronological order, but we're trying to figure out how best to truly organize this. Uh, you may notice if you click around, I can show you an example. Um, we're, we've got some hashtag subtitles that we're using through Pressbooks to give an idea of what sort of the guiding themes of the project are coming through in each individual module. Um, so we're looking at more of a thematic orientation than a, than a chronological one, but this is very much, uh, I would say version 1.0 of this project. It is what we have is fully there. It's good. It's ready to use, but we're going to do version 1.1 and 1.2 and 2.0 and keep building on this, this document as we go. Um, each module, like I said, consists basically of three parts. We've got an introduction. I did a couple. Um, so this one was written by me. The rest are written by graduate students. Um, so an introduction that places the primary text in proper context, try to throw in images when we can. Um, this one's on the Moriscos, which is a theme near and dear to my heart. Then we have the primary text which Pressbooks, if you haven't used it before, has a really easy to use and natural glossing system. 
So it's very easy to just, just gloss a primary text. Students don't have to be jumping around to dictionaries too much, hopefully. They can just read through. Um, and then as we go, you see some questions. And at the end, we always try to have larger themes, often connecting to other modules, other classes, other disciplines. We try to get creative when we can, because that's a really great way to have deep engagement in the, in the text. Um, what else? I can just, I'm just gonna kind of scroll through some other examples as I'm talking here. Uh, this is the most recent one that we've published, Ni Una Menos, um, which obviously has a lot of connections with, with cultures that the majority of our students are coming from with the Me Too movement. And one of the really nice things about Pressbooks is seamless integration of video so students don't have to be going around too much to different links. Um, though I will say, if I can find the, we are still dealing with some copyright issues based on some of the things that students did. So for example, we have a module on Maradona that is built around a short story that is not in public domain. So we link to the story. We link out to it, but we can't host it. Um, so there are little things like that that we're still ironing out. But overall, that's the shape of it. We've got, as far as the future of the project goes, like I said, what we have here is finished, but we want to keep building it out. Uh, to the point that it can really hold as a full semester textbook. Right now, it's more suited to, to a la carte sort of picking and grabbing what works for your class, your curriculum. Um, and we don't have any more grant money, but we only got 5,000 from the KU libraries, which I say only, it was a lot and it was able to, to support grads, like I said, but we're always looking for other folks. I saw, I think, one of our contributors actually is in here. So I'll try to save some time if she wants to share too. Um, but um, we're, we're always looking for other collaborators, other sources of funding, faculty volunteers. Um, so anyone who's interested, obviously, feel free to reach out. Um, as I'm sure pretty much everyone is concluding their um, presentations with. I'll pop my, my email in the chat there just in case folks want to reach out, not just to collaborate, but with questions, concerns, whatever. I'm always happy to talk about this project. It's like a lot of OER stuff. It's, uh, it's one of those things that is a passion project for us. A lot of us aren't doing it because we get a lot of the research kudos or anything. We're doing it because we care and we're here on a Saturday sitting outside to talk to folks about it. Um, so I think those are really all the, the main talking points I wanted to get through. I'm sure I forgot one or two things, but feel free to pop some questions in the chat. If Mirla or anyone else is in the chat who wants to chime in, absolutely go for it. Great, thank you. Yeah, it looks like we have about seven minutes for questions. Could you, do you want me to read the questions or do you, are you okay reading them in the chat? Good question about issues with students following along and dealing with instructions and things like that. Um, so far in the classes we've used it in, it, we haven't really run into, into much there. Uh, students, uh, as long as we kind of show it to them the first time in class and say, here's the intro, here's the primary text, here are the activities, they, they're able to follow it pretty easily <laughs> and a lot more easily than they were with the, the Carlos Fuentes text, which, as I said, I personally love, but 
man, is that thing dense. And we ended up having a lot of instructors assigning it in English, actually, um, which is not ideal because we, we want to stick in the target language as much as possible. And even in English, we, we spent a lot of class time just saying, like, what happened here? and not getting to the next level of analysis that we wanted. So, so far from what I've done and from what I've heard from other instructors in my unit who've used these, students get it a lot better. They come to class more prepared to share their opinions and interpretations, not just what the heck did I just read. Um, so, so, so far really positive. Uh, I've been really happy with press books. Uh, I chose to use it because our our library's got a, an institutional uh, contract with it. That's why the link has like open text KU in it. Um, the learning curve was really not bad, to be honest. Uh, very user friendly, especially compared to other things. Like I think it's more user friendly than than WordPress or things like that. I think it's way more user friendly than Blackboard or most big LMSs and obviously can do more in terms of integrating video and media. Um, I do want to play with some of the more interactive features like it does work with um, with several like H5T and things along those lines. But my first task was just trying to get as much of these up as 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 possible. Pressbooks wants a password to review it that I have no idea about can you all see the stuff though with the link I just managed to open the link for a little while there I did have one of them password protected because it was uh because I was still working out copyright stuff but that should be done now so as far problem. as reviewing I have no clue but but I love Pressbooks. I really I really would recommend it to anyone interested in in developing their own materials. Thanks for being here. Thanks to anyone who presented this morning. My son really did enjoy a lot of the presentations this morning. I had it on in the background as we were playing with trucks, and he was just pointing and saying words at the screen. It was great. So yeah, thanks for listening. Thank Appreciate you, Sean.